Hey everyone, welcome back to the lab. In this video, we're gonna be talking about how to build a simple markdown blog with F Sharp and Giraffe. So you wanna build a blog with F Sharp and Giraffe. Good choice, great stack, huge fan. Previously, we built an F Sharp Giraffe backend with type safe server side HTML rendering. So you could just use that approach to build and write your blog. But writing in HTML is kind of bothersome. There's all those tags and you might need to provide styles and you'd have to escape certain characters like the less than, the ampersand, the greater than sign, etc. And this is obviously very um, tedious. So you probably don't want to do it by hand. And if you do it wrong, you risk, um, you know, breaking your entire page. Markdown is typically a more ergonomic approach. And this post will explore how to build a Markdown blog with F Sharp and Giraffe. And so specifically, the question we're going to be answering is how can we build a Markdown blog with F Sharp and Giraffe? And so that's what we're going to be doing in this video. So in this post, we'll explore an example project that serves blog posts written in Markdown as full style HTML pages. The stack, which should be familiar been following along, is the app side is F Sharp and Giraffe. Uh, we're pulling in a few libraries here. So Markdig is going to help us do the Markdown parsing. Um, YAML.NET we're going to use to actually parse the YAML front matter that we get from the Markdown. So this is often how you're going to do things like give metadata about the post, like this is the title, the date, the tag, stuff like that. Um, and then for hosting it, we're going to be running it locally, obviously, but we're going to be using Docker and Docker and Compose for containerization and orchestration. I use this for basically all my uh, projects because it makes things just super, super easy. And so this is kind of like an illustration of like what this is actually going to do. So this might be self-evident, but I think there's like an, a lot of underlying complexities in here. So let's say that you've got your user over here um, and they're going to your web page. Um, they're going to hit, you know, some URL here. It's going to go through Giraffe um, and it's going to hit our .NET app running F Sharp. And what we're going to have to do is basically we're going to have to take our Markdown file. We'll first see if it's there, take our Markdown file, and then we're going to have to do a bunch of parsing and stuff to like get information out of it. Um, once we've got it in a state we want, we're going to have to convert all of that to HTML. And then we're going to have to return it through Giraffe um, to the user's browser where they'll actually like see your thing. And that probably is self-evident, but I think it's important because we're going to have to go through each of these steps. And there's like a lot of code in this post. Um, so this is why. And so this is basically, you know, that description again. So the request is going to hit our back end. Um, we have a few endpoints. One of them is the slash post slash post ID. And then we're going to look for a corresponding markdown file um, with that name. And basically what we're doing is like, you know, the handle or whatever that we get here is what we're going to look for as the file name. If we find it, we're going to have to parse it. We're going to try to pull out the front matter if it exists. Um, and then we're going to try to encode the markdown that's left over as the HTML. And then we're actually going to return that as a... Okay, so there is a lot of source code um, in this post, as I mentioned. So in this blog post, we're going to go over some of the key parts of the source code, but I'm not just going to do a full dump of all the code because that'd be overwhelming. If you do want the full project source code um, of the example project, uh, you can get it at my example project repo here. And it's it's available to my Himanian subscribers. Okay, so let's start off with an overview of the blog and kind of the pages we're going to be building. So the entire blog is driven off of the markdown files in the project. So we've got front matter, which uh, I told you is like the metadata. So it's like title, date, and tags. Um, and then we're gonna have the body, which is like the rest of the file. This is like your writing um, and stuff is in here. Um, so the example markdown files we're using include an assortment of different markdown features. So you can get an idea of how it might look for a real post. Generally, they're gonna look like this. And this is kind of what it looks like. But um, when I tried to do like actual front matter in here, it actually broke my blog because I think, you know, I'm doing some parsing on my own website uh, for the front matter. So this like the parsing was wrong or something. So just imagine there's three dashes here. And I'll actually just go ahead and open up the uh, example project here to show you. Um, so here's what I'm running off of. Uh, but basically, I've got the static folder. It's got all posts. And then I've got one, two, and three, which are just blog posts. Let me make this smaller. Um, and here's the front matter, right? So this is this YAML. There's different ways to do front matter. We're just going with YAML. Just got a title here, a date, and tags. That's how we're doing metadata. And then basically, taken this example from Markdown it here, which is just an example post with a bunch of different Markdown features. So we got headings here, we've got um, little spacing dividers here, all these different like little like typography symbols, we've got different ways to do like bold text and metallic text, stuff like that, basically just a grab bag of a bunch of different things that Markdown can do so that we can see if our like Markdown engine is, is running as we So while we're here, I'm going to um, kill this project. And then I'm going to restart it just so that we can I can prove to you that this is actually what's running on my machine. So just reran it. It's going to be doing some buildy stuff over here. And now it is actually spinning up the dockers. And so now we've got .NET listening over here. And so if I go to here, we've got little ping pong URL. And then we can kind of go over here to the slash posts, which is where our thing is, is listening to, to show us this UI that we're building. And so here we can see that we've got, you know, post one, post two, and post three from that folder I just showed you. Um, and they've got a tag here. And if we click into 
let's say like post three, we can see we get like a post page and here's um, kind of what I'm, I'm showing you is like all those headings and the horizontal rules and the weird like typography things. These are all here so we can kind of see that, you know, they're being rendered. We can see that there's HTML, there's styling, um, they're they're not marked down anymore. You know, they're rendered as HTML. Um, and then these things work. So we can come over here to a tag page, which is similar to the post page, but here we've just got like the, the posts. So we've got the odd posts here. Um, and if we did even, uh, we'll only see this one. So that's it. That's basically the blog that we're going to be building. It's got the all post page, the actual post page. Um, so you can see all the writing and then it's got the tag list uh, as well. And it does look a little goofy. I'm using just a Pico CSS, uh, which is a very minimal kind of like CSS framework. I've never really used it before, um, but it has decent stylings out of the box. So I just kind of went with it and threw something together. But yeah, other things to call out is, so the post page was at slash posts. Um, the posts, like a actual post page where, you know, you can see the actual writing that's going to be at slash post slash post ID. And so here's slash posts, here's tag slash even with the tag. And then here's slash post slash post ID right here. And we can see that it's post three. And so that's what it's going to be listening for. So this is obviously a very simple blog, but it covers most of what you'd want and should provide a good foundation to build whatever it is you're missing. Okay. Onto the post service, which is how we're getting from Markdown to HTML. So the core of our work in this app actually isn't the HTML rendering as we've covered that previously. Uh, the novel work here is trying to parse useful information out of our static markdown files so that we can use them dynamically when we get a request. To that end, I've created a class I've named the post service that handles a lot of this work for us. Yes, a class is not very functional, but the beauty of F -sharp is you can go more or less functional as you wish. Typically when we're doing something stateful, wrapping it in a class or hiding it in a function is the 3S or simple scalable system solution for this. Yeah, and I think people get it twisted when they're all talking about functional. They're like, there can be no state anywhere, but the truth is every app that's doing anything useful needs state. So functional is never about like getting rid of state or getting rid of side effects, but it's actually about managing them better. Yeah, I'll probably have a full fledged idea on this and then turn that into a post eventually, but that's my, uh, you know, three sentence hypothesis on that. Okay, so on app startup, we're creating post service with a file path parameter to point it at the folder of markdown files we want it to handle. So here when we're creating post service, we're pointing it at this static slash all post area, which is where our little markdown files live. It will then do some pre processing to better understand the files it's dealing with, do some simple indexing for fast retrieval and make them available via clean APIs. So here's a rundown of what the post service is going to do. And then I'll do like a deeper rundown of like the code, but I, I realize there's a lot of code here. Um, and so if you just skip over the code part and just, you know, trust me on this, this, that might be easier for you. So, so your, your call on that. So basically we're going to create this post service and it's going to do a bunch of stuff. Um, so the first thing it's going to do is it's going to list all the files that are in the, the file path. So it's going to look at that static all post and say like, what files are in here. Then what it's going to do is it's going to create an index of all of those files. So it's going to get the post ID, which is that file name to the post path so that we know how to like actually read it later. And this is going to be important so that we can get fast retrieval without that much memory. Next, we're going to do a create a list of date ordered post IDs. So we're going to grab all the posts here, um, figure out what their metadata is, uh, sort them by date so that we've got this retrieve for the next time someone wants this. Um, and then we're only going to store the post IDs though in order so that we're trying to minimize the, the footprint because memory allocation is like an important thing at scale. Blog probably won't care about this, but but I care about this so that we can build it right the first time or we don't have to redo it. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create another index, which is basically tag to post IDs. And so this is how we're going to be able to have a quick index for tags. So when you go to one of our tag endpoints, um, we can just retrieve those very quickly for you. Again, here, we're only storing the tags and the post IDs. So just like a few strings per um, blog post to try to minimize that memory footprint. Okay, and then this is going to do all of this kind of pre-processing there. And then it's just going to give some simple functions for callers to access the data. And we'll be using this a lot in our um, endpoints to actually drive the data population uh, of our blog. And so first one is obviously get post um, using the post ID. The second one is going to be get ordered posts. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at that ordered posts um, guy we made here. And then we're also going to add pagination because we know that we'll need pagination. Um, and then the next thing we're going to do is get posts for tag. And so we're doing that again with pagination. All right. And so there's a lot of code here. Um, and I'm going to, I guess, walk through it because I don't know how familiar people are with F sharp and this might be useful to you. But if you don't care about this and you want to skip over to like the HTML um, rendering, you can do that because this might take a while. Okay. Um, and so the project is split out in our domain persistence presentation and service tree. This is a class it's storing state. So it makes sense for it to be in persistence. Um, and so let's open this up so you can see it and read it. Hopefully this is big enough on your screen. Uh, sorry if it's not, but here we are in post persistence. And the first thing we're doing is we're creating a front matter. We're 
making it CLI mutable um, because this is going to be created dynamically by the YAML.NET library, which we don't have control of, but we are just creating a simple type for it to fill in. And this is the title, date, and tags I showed you um, on the top of our markdown earlier. So here, you know, title, date, tag. Okay, now we get to post service. Um, and so here's the file path that we're giving. And, and if you're new to F Sharp, this is just a constructor for this class. And so we get this file path. So first thing we got to do is we got to get all the posts um, and their paths. So what we're doing is we're basically getting the location of where our code is running from. I, I don't know why this is always so hard in C Sharp, but it is. So we're getting the assembly, the current executing assembly, we're getting its location, we're getting its directory name, we're combining that with the file path we had. So the file path we're passing in is, you know, again, static slash all posts. Um, and so that's how we get wherever we are and whatever machine we're running, we need to navigate current directory to static slash slash all posts. And that's where you can find our, our post. Okay, so now we've got the, the directory for that. Now we need to find all of the files in there. And so we're saying all post paths. And that's how we're actually getting from here to enumerating all of the posts that are actually in. Okay, uh, next thing we're doing is uh, our post ID to path lookup. Um, and so this is how we're going to easily get from the actual post ID, which is, you know, our unit of or our GUID, if you will, for um, a post to the actual path that we're going to need later for us to read. Have some helpers here. And we'll talk about the ML deserialization in a minute. Or actually, we'll just mention it as we're going. So we're creating this YAML deserializer. This is again from YAML.NET. This is just the way it, it works. And what we're saying here is that like, hey, we need the lowercase because we know that our YAML happens to be lowercase. We will talk about the front matter in a second because we first need to come down here. So markdig is, you can use markdig by, by default to do your markdown parsing, but it's not gonna have all the features that you want. So for instance, we want um, front matter. And so we need to basically create a pipeline that's able to add in all these extensions that are that are optional um, to make it do what we want. And so we've got our markdig in here. We're doing mark, new markdown pipeline builder. We're saying use some advanced extensions. We want the YAML front matter um, because that's what we want to parse out. And then we got to build it. And so we're saving this off because we're going to use it later and continually use this thing um, as we you know get requests and we need to like retrieve the actual bodies of these these posts. Okay, and here is the entry um, for, oops, for the actual post. And now this is all before we've created our indexes, right? Because we need to be able to parse each post and understand what it is and before we can actually do the indexing. So this is what we're doing. Um, so we get a post ID and then we're going to give it a post option. So it's a something or nothing. We are using our helper there to get the, the raw string from the file. And then we're saying, this is basically an early return in F sharp. So we're saying, hey, if this is none, if there's this is nothing, then we're just going to return. We couldn't find this post. Okay, and here's where we do the actual parsing. So first we're, you know, we're using markdig again. We're saying, hey, go parse this string. And we know it's not none. So we can just grab the value out like this um, and use that pipeline that we created before. So this is the thing that has the YAML on it. And so this creates what markdig calls a markdown document. I don't really know what this is, um, to be honest, but it's got a lot of helpers on it for like looking at strings and like adding and removing blocks and stuff. But just know that's what it's got. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a, a parsed document. And so we're saying get post front matter for markdown document. Um, and basically what we're doing here, you can see by the anonymous type is we're trying to separate the front matter from the rest of the markdown document. And this requires parsing of some, like I showed you earlier that my blog post breaks if I have the three dashes and that's because I'm not parsing this very well. And so I must be doing some like raw string uh, parsing. And so that's kind of brittle. Um, and so what we're trying to do here is rely on markdig to find the, the front matter and only the front matter and, and remove that so that you don't run into this issue like my blog has currently where it breaks on these um, uh, characters. And so I'll show you what this does in a second, but let's just finish this function. Um, here we're separating the metadata out. So we're just grabbing the front matter and we're returning this post. And the post is of type, it's got an ID, which is a post ID. We've got the title, which is from the front matter, the date, which is from the front matter, the tags, which again are from the front matter. And then we got the body here, which is the parse document remaining markdown to HTML. So this is how we're getting whatever's left of the markdown and turning it into HTML that we can actually return to the front end. Now, this took me a while to write. So I did want to go over it. So we're getting that raw markdown document. And I tried to not to not like modify this markdown document. But what I found is that if I if I don't mess up, if I don't remove this from the markdown document, our front matter actually gets returned as part of it. And so this is the best solution I found. I think there might be a better one, but you know, I couldn't find it. Um, so basically, we're doing is we got the YAML block here. So we're saying markdown document, get the descendants, get the descendants that are YAML front matter blocks. So I think they're like the three dashes, or there's a few ways to, to say that it's YAML front matter. And then we're saying first or default, then what we're doing is we're getting the YAML here. I'm just unsafely doing this because I know that it always exists. Um, so we're saying, hey, get the line 
ends and two string. That's just how this markdown document thing works. And then what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna get the front matter out of this. And so I was hoping that there would be a different way to do this, but you really do have to deserialize with an object. That's just how this library works. Um, so kind of object is what it is. And so we're just saying deserialize this YAML that we had um, into this object that we created earlier that's CLI mutable. And so that's why it needs to be CLI mutable. And then finally, we what we need to do is we need to say, hey, that original markdown document that you had, you need to remove the YAML block because we don't want it in there anymore. Um, and this is how we're preventing the YAML front matter from appearing, you know, at the top of our, our post. And then we just return that. Okay, so that's, that's how we're actually doing the part of like, hey, we have a post ID. How do we like get it from, you know, markdown on your system and to like form that we can actually use throughout the rest of the app. So like actual metadata with the like HTML string that you, um, and that's a lot, but you know, I've abstracted it into these two functions. So if you just want to copy and paste that and use it in your own, um, be my guest, you shouldn't have to like change it up too much, hopefully. Okay, so now we're moving on to like kind of building the indexes of all those posts that we just kind of searched through. So the first one that we're just creating is just like a get all posts. Um, and now looking at this, this, this one actually is a little bit memory intensive because we're, we're materializing this list, but we're getting rid of this later. So this this list shouldn't live that long. So probably not that big of a deal, but this, this probably would have been better as like a sequence or something. So get all posts anyway, uh, you give it a function. It is a function, so you have to call it. And then we're basically mapping over all our post IDs. We're turning them into posts. Um, we're only picking the ones that actually exist and we're getting a list. So that's how we do that. Um, we're doing our date ordered post IDs here where we you know, have the actual post here so we can actually just sort by descending of date. And then this one's a little harder, um, but we basically have all the posts. We're mapping over all of them. We're creating a bunch of tuples. Um, and so now we have a, a string string list. So it's gonna be tag and post ID list for each of these posts. Um, then we're gonna collect them to flatten them into just a string string list again. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna group by the tag that we had here and then we're just going to flatten this so that it's tag id to post id list and then we're just going to turn this into dict so this is a dict of tag to the list of post id all right and then so we're going to create this little helper um get post for post ids this can be really helpful because we can use this in both um well we can basically just use this for for pagination this is like a pagination helper all it does is it takes the the post ids that that are taken in it's just going to filter those to those that actually exist it's going to skip the ones that um we don't care about and then it's going to truncate the list. And so this way we're only looking at valid post IDs um, and we're getting however much you want. And this is like basically, you know, pagination. Um, so then we've got get ordered posts. And all we got to do is say, hey, get the post for post IDs. We give it the date ordered post IDs and we just pass in page number and page size. Um, and basically the same thing for tags, except we're just going to uh, quickly, you know, double check that this tag list exists. And that's how we kind of like make these things um, available and nicely available for the rest of the app. Okay, so that was a lot of code um, and it's probably pretty scary. Um, but this really was the meat of what we had to do in, you know, to get this working. So if you just want to copy and paste this and, and use it in your app, that's totally fine. You don't really have to understand exactly how this works because yeah, this is, this is pretty complicated. Yep. I'm still scrolling. Yeah. And so this is definitely pretty complicated. Um, but I do have those two easy-ish functions, uh, there, which are basically, you know, deserializing it from, uh, markdown to something useful and then using it, that helper function to get the, the front matter off of it. Um, so if you're trying to build your own and just want to grab that, that's totally cool. Okay, so that's how we're actually getting our posts into a form that we can use. Now let's actually talk about how we use them to turn them into HTML. All right, so rendering pages with server-side HTML. All right, so in my previous post about this, um, type safe server-side HTML rendering with F-sharp and giraffe, we actually used uh, a library called Scribon for templating. And it allows you to do things like this, um, like for Sentinel and Sentinels, you know, render render this thing many times. So if you're from like Svelte or Vue or Mustache or any of those kind of like templating things, this probably looks pretty familiar. As I built more with this stuff, I've decided like it's not that useful because we kind of have to like go from our type safe F sharp to this like templating thing, which we don't control and we kind of only fail at runtime um, just to get a string back out. And so I'm kind of leaning more to the side of like, let's just use F sharp to build raw strings. And so that way we're, I mean, we're still dealing with raw strings, which maybe we don't like. At least F sharp's type system can can reach further on, on each side and there's less kind of like room for unsafeness. And I found it to be a lot easier and better in less steps. So that's that's what I'm, I'm doing in this post. But let me know if you have, you know, other suggestions or you hate this or something, because uh, I'm, I'm still playing around with it. Okay, so we're going to go over a few things um, about this. So first thing we want to talk about is helper utilities. So, you know, building raw HTML strings may seem like a faff and prone to errors. Usually I'd agree with you, but doing so with F sharp actually allows us to rely on its excellent type system more than we'd be 
able to do with the template intermediary, uh, which is what I just showed you of, you know, Scribon. It's just like, you know, it's just unsafe, right? Like you just have this string template and then you have to like give it a model and the model has to match the, the string template. And so there's just so much more room for like, you know, error. Um, and so yeah, here as usual, uh, static types win. You can check out this post. Uh, it's basically, you know, your programming language benchmark is wrong. Um, basically talking about how like people are measuring the wrong thing all the time. Um, and the best advice I have for you is, you know, use static types. Okay, um, but doing this manually every time certainly would be a faff. So I wanted to first share some small utilities I built that I found useful and that we use in other components. Okay, and so um, here I've got them at the, the start of the file. So I've just got my like little presentation module and the first kind of helper I've got here is HTML code. And so this is going to take like a raw string um, and this is gonna encode it so it's safe for HTML. And so what this is gonna allow us to do is like turn those like less than, greater than, ampersand, like unsafe things that would break our HTML into something that it will render what we actually want and it, it won't think it's like syntax and, and break our page. This is actually interestingly what Scribon is using internally. So, you know, as I was saying, we don't need to use Scribon anymore. Well, it's because we found a better way to get the same power of like escaping our HTML without having to go through that unsafe templating state. I think just using this gets basically everything you want. You probably put anything that's like a string that's in your data model through this if you don't want it rendered as, as HTML, just to be safe in case there's like any weird characters. But the next thing we've got is an HTML for each. And so kind of as I showed you with, you know, these other templates, one of the nice things they give you is like shorthand for doing iterations. And when I was trying to just build raw strings up with F sharp by itself, kind of with like those interpolated strings with the three quotes, um, it was actually hard to do kind of like how you do it in uh, React where you can have a code block and then recreate more because there's still strings and you can't have interpolated strings instead of interpolated strings. And so what I found a good way to do this is, is to just have an HTML for each. And so you still can't necessarily build it directly inside if it's like a complex uh, template that you're building, but this is a really great shorthand. I mean, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna build items. Um, so this is the thing that you're gonna iterate over. Uh, you're gonna have a renderer. So like, what are you actually gonna put the items inside? And so this allows you to have a function um, that you build yourself in line uh, that has a template and then a join string because we need to be able to join this as well. And I found that this is actually more flexible because if you don't want anything in the middle, you can just use an empty string. If you want things to be after every item, you can just put it in the template. Um, but there's this weird problem I had where like you have tags and you only want things, like you don't want it at the end, but it needs to be after everything except for the end. Um, this join string is a great way to do that, which we'll show you later. Okay, the next thing we got is format date. So we're getting the date um, and then we're just turning it into a string. This O notation is the year, 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 month, month date. So year, month date, which I think is the only date time uh, format we should be using. So that's why we're using it here. And then the last thing we've got is like a post layout. And so if you've been using SvelteKit or, you know, even React and stuff, there's always gonna be like a root component that like has like the base core things that you want on your web page. And so um, these are things like here we're using Pico it to get Pico CSS. I'm from the CDN. Here's where we're including our local CSS um, that's being served as a static file. Here's how we're saying this is like actual HTML. Um, everything like that we can just put in here. Um, and then what we're doing is we're just kind of providing those slots that you might, you know, see um, in a lot of other templating languages, head, body, footer, and we're putting them in. And so this should give you a pretty good idea of like how we're thinking about building components with these raw strings. And so it's pretty close, I think, to what you'd see in like a lot of these template languages. Yeah, we don't get syntax highlighting here because it's a string, um, but still we, we do get like full type safety here. Okay, so those were our helpers. Now let's move on to our first page, which is the post page. Um, and so what this is gonna do again is it's gonna render our blog post page with the right. So here I've got my post page view, um, but remember, you know, F sharp, basically you gotta write it downwards. So there's no circular dependencies. Everything that you're using must have been declared above. So we're actually gonna start this at the bottom because um, this is gonna be the entry point to our page base. Um, and so here's where we start. We got a post page handler here, and this is gonna take in a service tree, which is basically our dependencies that we expect this domain to want and need. Um, this is how I do a dependency injection. And then it's gonna have props. And so these are the things that it actually needs for itself um, to run this time. Um, so we're taking in a context. We don't need it right now, but this is how giraffe passes around like any parameters you might wanna grab off this um, payload. Um, so you might want this, we don't need it now, but I think you should have it anyway. Um, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, hey, wrap this in async. We're gonna return this, await the async, um, and then call render post page async, give it the service tree and it's... Okay, and so here's the, the start of our component. Again, we're passing these in here. And then, you know, this is async. It doesn't necessarily need to be async because, you know, everything we're doing is synchronous, but you could imagine that a lot of like IO, like even this could be async if we wanted. So I think it's just good to have that at the top level. And here we're actually using 
the post service, which is passed in as part of our service tree because it's been injected um, as a dependency. Um, and we're passing in the post ID we get from the props. And so that's how we get the post out that we want. Once we have the post, what we're gonna do is, you know, call that layout that we had. So that's the layout we had uh, earlier. We're gonna give it a title. So this is titled blog sample. For the body, we're gonna say, hey, render this. Um, and then for the footer, we don't have anything there. So um, we're just giving it an empty string. Okay, and so here we get to our typography component. So it takes in props, which are just a, a post option. Um, and so here we're gonna build the post body. So if there's none, we, we weren't able to find something. We're just gonna say, hey, no post bound. But if we did find something, then we're gonna create, um, this is like a card in, in Pico. Uh, we're gonna just create our heading. So this is where the title is, the data is, this is how we're formatting it. This is how we encode these values so that they don't leak those like bad um, characters that we don't want. We're gonna call render tag links, which I'll show you in a second for the post. Um, and then we're gonna render the post body. And so this is that HTML that we had earlier um, that we got from the mark. After that, I just have this extra template over here um, that we're just shoving the post body in it. These could probably be combined, but is what it is. And now let's look at render tag links, which does what you probably expect. So we just get a post here and then we're, this is where we're using our for each. For every tag, what we want is we want you to fill in this. So it's tags to the tag name. Um, and that's kind of how we get to those pages. Uh, we're wrapping it in an A link here. Um, and then for the join, we're giving it this bar. And this is how we're getting that behavior of like, we have a bar between tags, but we don't have bars at the end, which I realize I can't even show you because uh, I don't have anything with multiple tags. So let's just add three here. Okay, added three to tags. Let's come back over here. Boom, look at that bar, only in the middle, not at the end. Does it matter? Absolutely not. Is it cool? Absolutely yes. Okay, anyway, so that's the post page. Hopefully that makes sense. And we just talked about all this. Okay, now let's talk about the post list page. So we're reusing some of the components that we, we talked about earlier, um, and it's gonna be built in in very much the same way. So we're coming back here, coming back down to a new module, a post list view, and let's start at the bottom. So here we got our page handler. So it's getting that service tree, um, it's getting its context, and it's gonna call a render post list page async. And this is what's actually going to render uh, the post list. So again, we're giving it props. Um, here I'm just saying page number zero, page size 10, so like the first page. But you can imagine you could pass that in via the, the handler. Then we're just, you know, calling again, get ordered posts from our post service. We're rendering the layout, title, body, and footer here. And now we've got this uh, post list component. So we're just getting props. Uh, props here are just the title that you want on the page. And then um, the list of posts that you actually want to, to have in this list. And here again, we're using our for each here. For every post, we want to do this thing. Um, and we just basically create a, a big link over a card, which has the title date and um, the actual links here. Then we just encode some of the stuff um, and return the post HTML. And now we just do the tag page, which, you know, as you look at it, it looks very similar to the post list page. And so we're actually reusing most of the stuff we had before. Um, and we can see that down here. So we got our page handler here for tags. And this is taking in the tag from uh, giraffe. And so it's passing it down here. So it knows what tag to, to show. Um, so we get here, we got our service tree, we got our props. Props is just a tag here. Um, we're gonna, you know, access our post service for our posts. And then what we're gonna do is again, reuse that um, list component we had earlier. Um, but this time, give it a title of. Okay, that's a lot of code, a lot of me talking. Um, that's basically how everything works kind of in isolation. So we've gone over most of what the app does. Um, we got indexing and parsing of markdown to HTML. Um, and then we've showed you how to do the rendering the HTML for each page using these dynamic values that we're getting from the, the posts that we've. Now, the last thing is how all of this goes together so that we're actually serving these endpoints so people can hit them and get our blog posts. There are a few parts to this uh, domain endpoints and then spinning up the actual app. Um, I'm gonna explain as much as I can here, but going into details about how F Sharp and Giraffe works is beyond the scope of this post. This is already going quite long. Um, and you know, this would be much longer uh, if we did that. So if you're curious to learn more, you can check out um, build a simple F Sharp web API with Giraffe um, and also endpoint routing with F Sharp Giraffe, which is gonna tell you more about just like how to pass parameters and stuff through um, the endpoints, how to construct these endpoints and stuff like that. All right, so first let's talk about domain. Um, so first we're gonna define a function that organizes all the endpoints for our domain posts in one place so it's easy to configure in our domain and have it connected with the rest of the app at the composition. And I really like this approach of where basically you have everything to do with your domain inside the domain and then you just know that at the top level, usually the presentation level or something, you're gonna be able to configure everything from the composition root through that that one kind of handle. And this is really useful because like, you know, for, for a blog like this, we, we only have one domain, right? Which is posts. But if you actually build 
an app that's going to live for any amount of time, it's almost always going to have like multiple domains. And if you're like at a, a company, um, those domains are going to be in like the dozens to hundreds. Um, and so I think thinking about these little simple scalable systems that you can use now that don't really get in the way now, but make it so much easier in the future um, really helps. And so this is how I think about it from a domain level. We're basically creating this guy construct endpoints, which creates um, the dependency injection of what this domain needs. And so this is basically giving you the, the plug and play version of like, how do I use you? And it's like, this is this is how you use this entire domain. And so we say construct endpoints, give it the dependency injection of everything this domain needs. And now um, we're gonna show our routes. And so we've got our git routes here for slash posts. And we're gonna call this helper function render view, um, which is gonna turn whatever we return from our inner handlers into real HTML. So instead of just returning text, we're gonna say like, hey, this is this is HTML, treat it like HTML. And so here, you know, slash posts is going to our post list page handler. It just needs the um, dependency injection here. Uh, for posts with a post ID, this is how we're saying we wanna pass in a string. Um, here we're gonna say we have to have an inner function that takes in the string that we have. So this is post ID, and then we can do render view post page handler service tree here. And then we just set the post ID to this. And then for tags, we're doing the same thing, except for now this is actually a tag. And so we just call that a tag post list page handler here. Okay, uh, and note that we are calling a custom middleware here, render view, which is handling turning the return strings into an HTML response. The browser knows how to deal with it. Um, we talk about this way more in type safe server side HTML rendering with F sharp draft. So check that out if you want, but basically this is a middleware. Um, it can pass on to the next guy and all it's doing is saying, hey, get the results of that and turn it into an HTML string. Okay, so that's that's basically how we're allowing some app to actually like construct the endpoints that we were requiring for this domain to work. But now we have to combine all the domains. You know, we only have domain here, but like imagine we have multiple um, into something that can actually run. And so this is what we call the composition root. And so here we're gonna be building up our service tree, which has, you know, all our dependencies because it's how I'm doing dependency injection. And then we're gonna build our routes with those dependencies. And so, you know, this is an abbreviated version, but basically, all right, I'm actually just gonna show you this in, in the code base. So we have nice um, syntax colors. So here we are, we're in routes. And so we're at the base of uh, our app now. So this is a composition root over here and we're building our service tree. And so we get our configuration. You can imagine this could be like prod, et cetera. And this is where we're actually creating that post service. And this is how we're actually pointing it to static slash all posts. This doesn't need to be here, um, but this is how we are creating, you know, the post service tree and saying, oh, you can call a post service as a function. We're going to return this post service that we've we've built um, on app startup. And so you're like, okay, so that's how we, how we actually build that service tree. How does it actually get to our routes? Well, this is how it gets to our routes because routes has been called with the app configuration. We're creating our service tree here. And then we're saying, hey, host endpoints, construct your endpoints like we just showed you. And then I'm going to pass you down the service tree, the dependencies that you need. Okay. And how does this all go together? Basically, this is, you know, all in our program.fs. So here's the main function. So where this whole thing actually starts, uh, a lot of ASP.NET nonsense. Um, but what we care about is this configure app and configure services, because this is where we actually hooking into our own code. Figure services is how we get giraffe, more on the draft post, um, but configure app is where we want, because this is where we're actually creating our endpoints list from routes and we're passing it in that configuration. And then we're actually hooking this into giraffe here at e.map giraffe endpoints. And that's it. <laughs> so yeah, uh, with that, you should be able to build a markdown blog running on F sharp and giraffe. I know that there's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of code uh, that we went over here, um, but I figured that I'd give you more code than less so that you have more to reference because I know F sharp, you know, is a little bit um, starving for, for dev content like this. Um, so hopefully it didn't confuse you more than it helped you, but uh, more reference is better usually. All right, if you'd like to get your hands on this full project source code, uh, so everything I showed you today, you know, the Docker container, whole thing, everything I was kind of going through, um, you can do that by going to my code examples repo and that's available to all Hemingian subscribers. So you can check that out or you can, you know, try to repurpose the code in this post as well. Um, and if you like this, you might also like, and you know, especially if you're confused about this, which probably confusing, this is a really long post. Um, you might be interested in building a simple F sharp web API with giraffe to get like the basics of this stuff down. Um, endpoint routing with F sharp with giraffe. So you can kind of see how you might deal with other kinds of um, routes and payloads and stuff like that. And then if you're interested in like a simpler way to do this, or you just like other kind of templating languages like liquid or scribe on or anything like that, uh, you can check out this one. So for type safe server side HTML rendering with F sharp and draft. Anyway, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.